Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to Making Stuff. In this video I'm going to be making a camera slider that I will use in future episodes and for various other things like uh, b-roll content, stuff like that. Uh, it's basically a slide like I used in the uh, claw machine a couple of episodes back. It's got a stepper motor, a timing belt, it moves uh, on a linear uh, bearing that I make myself and there's a limit switch on each end that toggles the direction of the uh, camera uh, when it reaches the limit. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so I just want to pause here for a second and show you guys what I'm going to do here. And this next segment, I'm going to be cutting the uh, groove to mount these bearings. And this is just a roller skate bearing. Uh, there's four of them on there. It's mounted on the same three-quarter angled aluminum. This is the same bearing in the claw machine, same type of bearing. Uh, you can look in that video, see how I used it there. It's a little bit different. But uh, I know from previous experience that this edge to this edge needs to be 0.825 inches. And you're probably wondering, how on earth do I get 0.825 inch cut with a table saw? And the answer is this right here. This is a dial indicator. I've got it mounted on uh, two little pieces of plywood that I've got here. And there's a magnet on the bottom. I got this off a CB antenna from a yard sale, I think, just somewhere a long time ago. Uh, and what I do is you just put this on here and you zero it out. And once you've got it zeroed out, you can go through here. I'm going to make my first cut, then I'm going to flip it around, make the cut again on the other side. Then I'm going to move this this direction 0.825 according to this dial indicator. Now, this dial indicator will go up to a thousandth of an inch. It's very accurate. This is a very accurate way of making this cut. Then once I've moved my fence over, I'll do a second pass on both ends of the board, and then that's going to give me a parallel groove like this in my work in my workpiece. Now, this is a lot easier than cutting the board to length and then trying to get this groove, this parallel cut, exactly in the center. It's easier to make your groove first and then trim the board to length. So hopefully this will all make sense. If not, uh, watch the video and it should make sense then. So I just wanted to show you guys just how well this technique works. I've got my trucks here. Here's the board. I just cut these slots in and it makes such a good fit. I have to start from the outside and slide these suckers in here. But there's no tape. There's no screws or glue or anything on there. These, these bearings are not going to come out just from having that cut precisely at the right width and wedging these in there, if you can see that, that's enough right there just to hold it in place. So this works really, really well. I've used this technique for a lot of different things. So let's continue on with the board.
thanks for watching. I hope you like my camera slider project. One thing I'd like to point out is this one is a little bit noisy. And I think the problem is the 3D printed uh, pulleys that I made. Just the, the 3D printer I've got is an older printer and it just doesn't make really smooth prints which causes the timing belt to creak. I also don't think it's square. I think it wobbles just slightly uh, on the motor because it creaks in the same spot when the pulley spins around. So for future episodes, I'm going to upgrade that. I'm going to order some aluminum pulleys uh, that should solve that creak problem. You may even have heard the, the creak there at the very beginning of the video. But uh, other than that, I'm satisfied with it. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button. Be sure and subscribe, and thanks for watching. <music>